Hey everyone, I'm Meg, this is Meg's Creations, and welcome back to Coffee With, the audio-visual podcast where I paint to and chat with awesome and inspiring people using coffee. I'm so excited to be sharing today's episode with you because it is with someone who is just so lovely and so wonderful. Also, this was my first ever in-person interview, which is super cool, and I'd never met this person before this interview, so it was meeting them for the first time, having an interview in real life, which I've never done before. It was a big learning experience, and it was just so amazing, and this interview is with a lovely person called Ella Kalani, who is based in Qatar, and she is a self-taught yogi. And just her outlook on life, her outlook on her practice, of yoga and movement is just so refreshing and inspirational and I really think that you guys are going to take a lot from this so I'm really excited about this one as I mentioned. So there are two main ways that you can listen to and or watch this podcast. Of course the first being here on my YouTube channel where I upload the video as well as the audio for the podcast. The video being me painting the person that I'm interviewing and then the second way is that you can just listen to it as a podcast on a whole bunch of podcast platforms and apps and all that good stuff. Of course I will leave links to everywhere that you can find this podcast in the description box down below. And if you don't want to miss any new videos here on my YouTube channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. That'll just ensure that you never miss a new Coffee With episode again which I think is pretty cool. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. Please let me know what you think of it by either leaving a comment down below in this video, on any of my Instagram posts and or on the podcast. I would really appreciate your thoughts and feedback. And yeah, enjoy this episode and I will see you guys next week for another episode of Coffee With. With, every, with everyone is 60 seconds okay I mean it's not like an exact 60 seconds it's an, an, an approximate but if you just like to introduce yourself a little bit about who you are what you do and yeah and a little bit about your journey whenever you're ready okay. <laughs> no pressure though no pressure like it you know if it runs over 60 seconds it's fine <laughs> Okay, so um, my name is Ella. I am 22. I am passionate about yoga and fitness and growing and exploring what your body and mind can take, where they can take you. I'm on a journey currently of self-discovery, you know, pushing myself outside my comfort zone. I, th I think this is a passion. I've grown to love it. I come from an engineering background mm -hmm. <laughs> and I only started truly following my passion a year ago and it's been such an incredible journey so far and I'm excited to talk about it today. That was fab. No, that was really good. That was so articulate. So I think where we can start with is, we'll start with a little bit before where you are now and that is the start of your yoga journey. Okay. So just going through your Instagram. I saw that one of your first posts was in, it was June or July of last year. Yes. And that was one of your first yoga videos. Mm -hmm. And was that when you started yoga or did you start before that? And that was when you decided to share it. Okay, so I would say that exact post was around the time where I started committing to a daily practice okay. of yoga. Before that, I had, um, you know, experimented with the idea of, you know, meditation, breathing, using this mind-body connection to relax yourself, you know, just uh, have your, have some time for yourself. Um, I tried a, a YouTube channel, I, uh, sorry, a YouTube challenge mm -hmm. before that. Is it the yoga with Adrienne yeah, challenge? I did. <laughs> Yeah. But the thing is, I, I attempted that maybe a year before, so two years ago. I did her 30-day beginner mm -hmm. yoga challenge, and I actually didn't get through all of it. I stopped at maybe day 17, like halfway almost, because I felt like I wanted more. I, mm -hmm. I wanted to see the advanced stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. I wanted to see, you know, flipping upside down, and <laughs> I was just bored. Mm -hmm. So I was... 
I, I left it. I didn't think yoga was that challenging, was that exciting. I just stopped. And then I went to a class, I believe. Uh, but you know, up until now, mm. if I could count the number of classes I've been to, they all fit on one hand. I, I haven't been to that many classes. Mm. And I have a philosophy behind that, actually. That being that um, when you go to a class, especially as a beginner, it's challenging in many ways. First one being, uh, you don't get that individual attention. You don't get someone who watches your form, corrects you if you're doing something wrong or that could hurt you. You don't get this personalized feeling that I've grown to establish with my personal uh, practice, yeah. which is a very um, valuable aspect to my practice, my personal practice, I would say. Aside from this, um, from the lack of individual um, attention that you could get when you're at home, you can't really track your progress when you're going to classes. You do whatever the instructor wants. So in general, over time, if you keep going to classes, say, every week and then adding your own practice at home, maybe you would see a lot of progress. However, I just didn't feel like it was for me at the time. So I gave up, I didn't go to classes, I, I just did that challenge and I stopped. But then, um, so fast forward to a year later, I bought an ebook mm -hmm. to help me understand the basics of yoga. I followed so many people on Instagram mm -hmm. and I saved their <laughs> tips and I saved their how-tos and I saved their flows. I just got inspiration from that. So mm -hmm. my news feed, my, not my news feed, my home feed, <laughs> was 90% yoga, mm -hmm. so every time I would go on Instagram to waste time, I would just be bombarded by all these things. So. You will love it. It's good. <laughs> yeah. It's good. Was, That's a good way to do it, actually. Exactly. So so I, I figured since I'm on it anyway, mm -hmm. might as well just uh, turn it into a yoga fest. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I picked up on a lot of things, and then I started seeing how, okay, if I want to work on my back flexibility, this is what I can do. Mm. So I began identifying the poses and recognizing ways to get into certain poses and stuff. So then I added that into my practice. And then I kept getting excited to try more and more stuff. Mm -hmm. And then it was a matter of planning. So I would say, okay, this week I want to work on my back and my hip area, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Et and then I would plan the days and warm up and then get into that and then, you know, end it with a slow meditative ending so Definitely. yeah and then I grew to love it I mm -hmm. became attached <laughs> and so did it stem from so I did read on one of your posts that initially it was kind of like a de-stressor type mm -hmm. thing and so did that start from you know when you were at university was there a lot going on there or why did you gravitate towards it I would say um Several factors came into play as to why gravity gravitated towards yoga. One of them was that I was indeed stressed. It was university, I was going through a hard time, I was trying to figure out what I want. And I, had, I think I was going through that phase where I started not really caring about what people think. Prior to that, I had put myself in this cage, you know, and I blame myself for it fully <laughs> I just I had these expectations of my in my head of how I should act simply because I wear hijab mm. and I'm Muslim and I'm a girl and all these things um, that limit you <laughs> sometimes if you yeah. like them and so I was trying to live up to this expectation of this girl who you know is walking on a straight line doing everything by the rules mm. and it, it just felt suffocating for me. So I, I started changing the way I look at everything. Mm -hmm. I changed the way I live my life. I decided that I don't want to live my, my life in a way that is very limiting. I want mm -hmm. to be free, I want to play, I want to jump around if I want to, I want to dance whenever I feel like I want to dance, you know. And um, that just felt liberating. And I think I think yoga was one of the things I felt could take me there, mm -hmm. could help me with this shift in my life, because 
I would read all these things about how amazing yoga is and how, how much it can really detach you from, from all these expectations you can have of yourself and of others and of the world around you. And I saw that as my way out. And uh, so I took, so that was one of the reasons. <laughs> um, the other reason is simply like, oh, that's so cool. I want to yeah. do that. <laughs> How could she do that with her body? I want to try to do that with mine. Exactly. So that was exciting for me. I'm, I'm very, I would say I'm very excited by challenges. And uh, it seemed like all these advanced poses were the perfect challenge for me. Definitely, definitely. And I think something that you touched upon, which is mentioned I'd like to explore, is that kind of expectation of, especially women, you know, who do wear hijab and the association with yoga, because there's not a lot of representation of that, I feel. And I think a lot of people have preconceptions of what it's like to be a girl in the Middle East um, and, you know, in Dubai or in Doha. And both you and I living here, Mm -hmm. we know that it's not what, I guess, a majority of the people think it is. Mm -hmm. It's a lot, it is a lot more freeing. There are challenges, but I just want to know from you, have you faced any challenges with going into yoga and into kind of sport? And also, how have you overcome some of those challenges? Because I think specifically with Instagram, it's obviously an open platform, you know, anyone can go on there. Have you experienced kind of any like negativity but also on the opposite side you know have you experienced lots of encouragement and positivity i just want to explore that a little bit it is a big question (laughs) you can unpack it however you like okay let's see where do i start how much time do we have (laughs) okay so let's begin with how do i feel about doing yoga in hijab Mm -hmm. and just being into the fitness world as a hijabi i personally i mean the reason i share on instagram is to remind people of many things first and foremost is that your religion is never going to stop you from truly living authentically and genuinely you can still be a person who is faithful and spiritual and at the same time you can play and not take life too seriously Mm. and you can try new things and explore your body and its capabilities so this is one of the very big reasons as to why i share on on this platform despite the harshness that i could receive in Mm. return as a matter of fact the majority of the negative feedback that i sometimes get is from hijabis. Interesting. Yes, but I've I've thought about this a lot mm. before. I thought, okay, why hijabis out mm. of all people? And then I realized, I, I looked back retrospectively when I was in that place where mm. I confined myself and I put mm. myself in this um, mental block, and in this cage really. I would look at people who dare to you know, go against the norms mm. and the societal and cultural expectations and I think why are they trying to stand out? Why are they doing this? Or are they trying to you know, just create attention and grab mm. attention or I would think of it like that. And that so I see where these people are coming from mm. when they give me negative feedback. But um, I don't allow it to get to me, honestly. I will continue to share what I share because I believe that as a hijabi, you can, first of all, you're not expected to be perfect. Just because you are hijab doesn't mean you're this perfect Muslim Mm. and you are not allowed to do all this all the other stuff that uh, everyone else does. So so this is uh, what I want to share. I want Mm. to share the idea that you're not going against your religion by mm. being fit or by doing exactly. yoga. You're really not going against... You know, a lot of people think that yoga is a religion, but it's really not. Mm. It's, it's a physical... I mean, that is that could be possible. Some people do use, use yoga to become more faithful and more yeah. spiritual. However, it could also be just a physical practice that calms you down, challenges you, and helps you just be improve that mind body connection definitely and so it, it's a beneficial 
practice. It's not really something that's tearing you away from your religion. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, I feel like... <laughs> no, I actually, I love that. I think one thing that I've, just on doing a little bit of research, I found an incredible lady called Ibtihaj Muhammad. Yes, I know her. And so she, so for those of you who are listening who don't know, she is the first American Muslim woman to wear hijab at the Olympics. Yes. And she is a, okay, I have to get this right, she's a, a saber fencer. <laughs> I think that's the specific kind, I'm not too sure. She, she is a, a fencing Champion. Was a fencing champion, but I think I read that and I thought that was absolutely incredible. Um, kind of the movement that she is starting, and there's quite a few people that I follow, like Dina Tokyo on YouTube, who are kind of really getting this whole idea of modest fashion, and then Nike doing their range of, of hijabs for sports. And I thought that that was so awesome. And so I think it's really amazing that there's you know more people. I don't want to say challenging the norms, but just expressing themselves more and, and normalizing it more. Because I, again, like doing research, I found that quite a lot of sports actually don't let women who wear hijab enter and compete because it goes against regulations, which is just absolutely stupid. Like there was one where I think it was uh, was it wrestling or something, and they weren't allowed because it would impact the other player in some form and that makes no sense mm -hmm. it makes no mm -hmm. sense you know and so again like just want to acknowledge you for what you're doing because it is amazing and there is a potential to receive a lot of negativity but I think the fact that you're just continuing to do it and just doing it in the most honest and authentic way is brilliant. And there's there's one there's actually one video in particular which I loved and it was the one of you doing handstands in the heels. <laughs> and I saw that and I was just like, this this is the best thing I've seen in a long time. It was just it was just great. I mean like so like what what inspired you to do that? I just really want to know. Okay, so I captioned that video, mm. Be More Girly, Hadir Yatan. Hadir Yatan means yes, auntie. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically, <laughs> when I was much younger, I used to be more on the tomboy side, mm -hmm. so I was more, I was less girly. And um, so every time I would go to Egypt to see my extended family, they would uh, just sit me down and be like, So, when are you getting married? Um, <laughs> what is that? Nobody, are you not dating? Nobody is, uh, you know, in talking to you. No mm -hmm. one is, I don't know, all these questions, you know. Yeah. And um, I'd be like, no, I, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm really just doing me for now. Yeah. You know, starting my career. And then um, they'd be like, you know, you just you need to, you know, work harder to look more presentable and mm. whatnot. And so I was just uh, very frustrated with all these comments and all these things that, um, you know, again, expectations mm -hmm. that were coming my way. And so I decided to be more girly <laughs> and wear yes. heels in my handstand practice because that's uh, what I do. Yeah. And that's my personal touch. I would be more girly. <laughs> it was fantastic. I absolutely loved it. And look, I really, I love the videos that you share because it really just shows how much progress you can make just in one year. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, like, you know, doing this through Instagram things. It's been one year, which some people might think, you know, is, is ages or not a long time, but it just, when you have physical evidence and things to look back on where you can see, I have made an improvement there. It's so rewarding. Mm -hmm. And so it's really inspiring for people who do follow you to not only see your progress, but then to realize that they can do that as well. And, and with that, quite interested to know what what are some things that you really like some little nuggets of knowledge and kind of lessons that you've learned throughout this year and throughout your practice that you want to share with people that you think oh this has really helped me and I want other people to know this as well well to start with I definitely want to put the idea out there that you can do whatever you put your mind to do. Mm -hmm. I previously had that belief, mm -hmm. but it's different when you 
try something and you commit through mm. and you see results that you once dreamed of achieving. That is something that is so empowering beyond my capability to describe. It's so empowering and it's so it makes you feel so strong. Like you can honestly take over the world. You can mm -hmm. do whatever you want. And so this is one of the things. This is why I like to share where I was before and how, where I am now. Because thankfully I managed to stick through with all my plans and just you know keep going and I've really reached levels with my body that I didn't know I could reach before, you know? Yeah. And that is just so refreshing and I think I think that like it honestly didn't cost me much. I just bought a mat. Yeah. <laughs> I bought I only got my yoga blocks like a month ago or two months ago. So really I had nothing. I just had a yoga mat and a belt, my one that you could use on your pants, you know, mm -hmm. just a just a very regular belt. You can use that to help you progress so much. You know, it's 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 very simple. It it doesn't take much. It just mm -hmm. needs time and it needs planning. It needs dedication. That's all it takes. And so, if you're willing to put these three things in, mm -hmm. you're there. You're you're prog you're progressing and you're growing and you're changing. And you're gonna reach new grounds. So okay. this is one of the things I'd like people to, to keep in mind at all times when they see my posts. I can't remember what the original question was. <laughs> Did it I answer was, it? <laughs> no, no, that's pretty much it. It was just basically like, what lessons have you learned yeah. that you want to, that you really, like these are the key things that you want people to know. Okay. So one of them is hard work, dedication, planning, and like you said, just the belief and knowledge that you can do anything. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you're just like, ah, oh, everyone needs to know this? Okay. Another lesson I learned is mind-body connection mm -hmm. is so important. If your mind believes that you can do something, you will do it. Yeah. If it doesn't, forget it. <laughs> yeah. So it, as long as you keep telling yourself, oh, I'm lazy, yoga is for me or um, I can never do this, or even if you joke about it, honestly, I heard this podcast the, the other day about how it was on Lewis House, mm -hmm. our biggest uh, it's Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, on the School of Greatness, uh, it was about how your thoughts can either kill you or help you grow. Was it and with Marissa? Yeah. Is it Marissa Peer? I, I think I that's her remember. name, or something like that. But yeah, she, she's, she's brilliant. Amazing. <laughs> Yeah, and she talked about how whatever you say inside your mind will affect your life. So if you joke about, you know, I hear this a lot. A lot of people joke about, oh, you know, uh, I'm a couch potato. Mm. It's not for me. Or I, I can't even think of an example right now because I... I think she, yeah. she referenced a lot of things to do yeah. with... Oh, I'm going to die. Yeah, or, or yeah like, like death. This is, and... so, this is so bad, I'm going to die. Yeah. Uh, my dad's gonna kill me if he finds yeah. out or all these things really manifest themselves mm. inside your brain they work with your body mm. to make you sick for example if you're yeah. trying to avoid a big event and you're like no way if I wait and that event happens mm. I'm gonna die you mm. Know? Mm. so your body goes into alert it's just it starts panicking and then it, it, it tries to find a way to make you sick mm -hmm. so that you don't get to that event and exactly. I really believe in that because I've witnessed myself throughout this journey where I would have instances and I think I cannot do a freestanding so in the middle of the room a handstand mm -hmm. in the middle of the room because if I fall I'm gonna flip and I'm gonna hurt my back mm -hmm. you know and so I d wouldn't, I wouldn't try it because my body thinks it's death, mm. so yeah. it would just <laughs> magnify it and make it so, this monster of an idea. Yeah. And, and so I wouldn't attempt it and then I wouldn't get, I mean, honestly, if I had gotten off the wall sooner and tried that, a handstand in the middle of the room sooner, I would have progressed so much more. Yeah. I've seen that in other areas where I've told myself, no, Allah, you're not going to let this fear again control you. you you have to convince yourself that it's going to be okay you know you you can you can try this and you can fail but mm. you're not going to die nothing's yeah. going to happen you're going to fall you're going to get back up and you're going to try again and eventually you'll get it 
So this mind-body connection is so powerful because mm. once you convince your mind that you can do something, you're more than halfway there. It's the most challenging part, I would say, to convince your mind that you know, it's going to be okay and you do this and it's going to be fun. We'll laugh about it if I yes. fall <laughs> and then I'll get back up and eventually I'll get it. So this mind-body connection was one of the biggest gifts, I would say, that yoga gave me. That's really cool. And it seems like that yoga has just completely transformed your life. Yeah. <laughs> and so what, deep within you, what has it done for you? Like, has it given you confidence? Has it given you the ability, like you said, to have that self-belief? What are those key things that it really has provided for you and your life? It definitely gave me a lot of confidence. Before yoga, I had this problem where I only associated how good I look and how good I feel by how much I would go to the gym. Mm. I would I would think, okay, I need to gym more regularly so I could be toned all the time. Otherwise, I don't look good or I'm not up there or I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I would have all these thoughts. And then, and I couldn't really stick through a gym routine because I was not going for for reasons where, that were deeper than to just look good, you know? Definitely. Because that really doesn't, I mean, it works for some people mm -hmm. and I, I'm happy for them, but for me, it just didn't work. I, every time that was my motive to go to the gym, I just didn't stick through. And so yoga helped me establish an easy practice that can advance my body. and. Through seeing myself accomplish things that I didn't think were possible physically, I've grown confident. And I've and every time someone, my family or my friends would tell me, you know, this is so cool, how did you do that? Or mm -hmm. that's so inspiring, that just kind of gave me this, oh okay, I'm I'm not that bad after mm -hmm. all. I, I can do something and I can inspire someone and honestly that's a difference made. So that kind of gave me a lot of confidence. It also opened a lot of doors for me. I mean, what I'm doing now, I'm teaching flexibility classes in Qatar, and I don't think I would be here. You know, mm -hmm. a year ago, I was just beginning, this, I'm trying this new thing, you know, just uh, yeah. testing the waters, you know. <laughs> and now I'm, I'm teaching, and I'm getting to inspire people in just the same way I was inspired. That's honestly amazing. And I love talking to people and seeing what their goals are and how I can help them achieve them. You know, just making sure they get to this place where they believe that they can do whatever mm -hmm. they want, you know? It's just, that just makes me feel like I'm making a difference. That is so rewarding for me. Yeah. Well, you no, you are making a difference, absolutely. Just chatting with you today, like we we'd never met before this. Yeah, <laughs> we only knew each other through through mutual friends, yeah. and to be able to reach out and have like these genuine chats and conversations is just like so empowering and like so amazing. And just want to thank you for <laughs> for everything that you do because it is. I think sometimes we can get so caught up in you know, in life and, and worrying about sometimes like, you know, is what I'm doing the right thing? You know, am I really making an impact? And sometimes it just does take that one person to say, hey, you're actually doing an amazing job. Yeah, so, hey, sure. you're actually doing an amazing job. <laughs> Thank you so much. And, you know, all that you chatted about today is really, is really coming across in, you know, the stuff that you share on Instagram mm -hmm. and to, yeah, keep doing it. Thank you so much. And just to keep going. In this podcast, I will leave links to all your social media places of being. Just for those who aren't following you, because you should, where can people find you and your work? So I'm mostly on Instagram mm -hmm. for the time being. I do plan to um, expand. Okay. <laughs> uh, possibly start a blog or a YouTube channel somewhere along the line. Okay, you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I mean... I'm at a transitional phase. I don't know when I'll be starting that, but mm -hmm. hopefully sometime in the future. Um, and I'm also thinking about starting to teach yoga in Arabic. That would be 
be so, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> that would be amazing. So hopefully have some some platform where I could share those. Mm. But for now it's just Instagram at mm -hmm. Kilani underscore. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> well there's one final question yeah. which I like to end kind of every chat on and it's you know it's be prepared. Okay. It's a it's a deep one. It's Love those. you know, packs a lot. Um, <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, not it's, it's, not, it's not really deep <laughs> because obviously this is called Coffee With and I'm going to be painting you in coffee I have to ask what is your favourite type thing? of coffee <laughs> yeah I love white chocolate mocha oh wow with almond milk oh <laughs> that's probably been the most extravagant one so far really oh yes we've had a lot of black coffees we've had some instant coffees really? we've had someone just say water <laughs> <laughs> so you have definitely set the bar for probably like the most yeah extravagant and i guess what would be the word um Specialized. Specialized <laughs> coffee. So I absolutely love that. And is there anything else that you would like to share that you just want people to know? I just want to make sure everybody knows that you can live your life as genuinely and authentically as you want to. Just drop all the expectations that you've made for yourself, that you've had other people give to you. And just focus on you, what do you want, self-reflect, visually, see what you, how you want to live your life. Sit down and truly be honest and see where you want to be, spiritually, physically, you know, academically, career-wise, everything. And just focus on that and devise a plan and make it happen and don't let anybody shake you or just listen to your intuition, listen mm -hmm. to your heart, listen to your mind, and just go out there and make it happen. 